Maybe. biggest question. Callista, you talked about Dagda. Nice pick to rise to the top. Uh, if Wink locks this in as well, we're just talking about picks and, and how they've been going. Four games on the Callista, five on the Varus. Something that is still super high priority. We haven't seen tonight. Or at least, have we seen a Dagda? No, we haven't. We really haven't. No, we so, haven't. No. Uh, first time Varus here tonight, which is still upper echelon. And Oriana for rookie. I know people are going to be upset seeing a, a very boring pick in his hands, but rookie can lane gap champions with this pick on a good day. Yeah, and he's looked phenomenal on it in the past. Now, again, against the Rise, you've got a great time here as this Oriana as well. You at range him, you can push effectively and try and at least get some damage down. Tries to enable the. Uh, Viego as well, when you hit that level six mark, gives some strong skirmishes towards the uh, the Viego Oriana against things like the Rise and Lee Sin. So we'll see if we get that fighting from IG, but very potent team composition for Invictus game. Actually, might be Shun taking the Gwen to the jungle. Let's, I let's assume hold. the Gwen is going topside. We've seen more Viego jungle than Gwen jungle, but we have seen Gwen jungle. Yeah, let, let's okay. just hold. All right, <laughs> like, we should assume this. You know, I've been saying the shy. And it just wants to play Gwen. It, it makes a lot of sense here. Uh, Dagda, run me through. You talked about skirmishing for IG. I like that point a lot, especially with our two Season 11 champions. There is a lot of range you can play through with Faris as well. A lot of Wombo with Orianna. I feel like it, it, it could do multiple things. Yeah, I think bot lane skirmishing is going to be the name of the game for IG. Or sorry, bot side of the map skirmishing for IG, especially yeah. towards like dragons and these kind of things. And um, you hit the level sixes and across the board, you get a little bit nutty when you look at the uh, four members on IG side. On the other side, four V5 though, still a lot of that scaling coming in where you are looking at the Phileos in the bot lane. So I think again for PZX, if you try to control Shun a little bit better than he did in the last game and trying to enable your top side, shut down this Gwen as well. On the other side, Dagda. If you look at V5, I, I know, just walking through the compositions quickly, I do like that, you know, we could see some powerful team fighting, right? Rise, nah, picks that we don't always talk about here, but um, nah puts them into the wall. Rise presses E, presses Q, and everyone's at half HP in like game. Yeah, it's a little bit silly, but I, I'm looking forward to seeing kind of the two teams go head to head again, though, because again, we talked about the individual. Uh, ability to try and like beat out your opponent here for IG well it feels like in a lot of situations like Ali is on the snare you can do pretty well against the shy in that top lane you've got this aggressive Lee Sin pick that we can look to see PZX trying to go for some of these early plays that we talked about for him so I think for V5 you have opportunities to try and play through this top side and find advantages there and then transition that elsewhere on the map but for now as we enter Summoner's Rift we'll find out because you see the Shy back on Gwen. We've got Shun on the Viego. Season 11 reigns true for Invictus Gaming. And on the other side for V5, Dagda's already talked about it there as well. Uh, the, the good scaling, right? I think importantly to note that that Rise, Aphelios, both their own little machine guns within fights. As the Shy just returns to his side of the map. And Dagda, a lot on the line for both these teams. If V5 lose this, they are officially out of playoffs. But if you gave it another week, V5 would be out anyway, so... I think it's important to note that they can stop IG. They can upset Invictus Gaming fans everywhere and push them down to a point where IG will most likely not win, go to playoffs if they lose this series. Yeah, I mean, it feels like a tall order, though, after that first game, right? It does look like IG kind of have the, the run against uh, V5. I also think just from a compositional standpoint, I kind of prefer what IG have Ooh, here. Sometimes. It feels like if you're trying to... Oh, hang on. A lot of trading. Okay, but... that'll happen again. He's got E again. That, I mean, it's a really short cooldown. It's what people forget yeah, that Gwen's E is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, you're going to be saying that a lot. With a Viego and a Gwen on the same team, Dagda, hold that word. Yeah. Hold that. What? <laughs> okay. Teleporting uh... Nautilus. Right. It's like watching a game of Bioshock, and Luke is just going to walk away from that, <laughs> but a good trade out of IG's bottom lane. Yeah, one of the things that, like, people don't realize as well about the Gwen in the top lane is like she has the highest base armor of any top laner in the game right now she's the same base armor of Melkai at 39 like it is absolutely insane it's why it's so difficult for like even in a range matchup against the Nar, she's fine to just go aggressive tank it and then use the fact she gets that 100 extra range off of her yeah. uh, skip and slash to go aggressive it's so obnoxious it really is and that's why Alias has to be careful he doesn't have the Mega Nar where he can you know, use the HP advantage. Oh, good kite away from the Shy. And start beefing down the Shy with some of these burst here trades. And he's going to have a great time sustaining it up here with the Doran's Blade and the Snip, nip, the Snip, Snip, the Skip and Splash once again. God, why are they all scissor related? 
The hallowing mist as well. That's just going to be used and trading continues here. Dagda, jungle pathing. Let's go. Let's have a conversation like like people would. It, you know, back in the old day, before the internet existed, remember, people used to talk to each other. Uh, what, do you, what do you like about yeah, the jungle pathing? I never pathing talked here? to anyone anymore. Oh, I, I mean, dude, internet exists. Why would you, right? We game, we go to bed, True. we wake up, we eat our breakfast. Sometimes. I mean, look, we're gamers. We don't have breakfast. Everyone knows. I've never had breakfast as a gamer. I wake up at 11, 12 o'clock. I have brunch. Fasting. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Super healthy. A PZX coming in from the bottom lane. I was going to ask you about jungle pathing a bit, but all bottom lane priority while Shun is focusing mid. Yeah, Uniboy trying to see if he can crash this wave. He's very safe, though, where he's positioned. Could always just run out this bottom side and not take too much damage. And the way he goes. All right. Well, no flash needed. Bye. That's it. That was highly interactive. But yeah, coming back to the jungle battle, it's kind of uh, even Steven right now, right? Both junglers have gone for uh, pretty much a full clear where you look at only really the PZX going back down towards his bottom side to get the grump for himself. Um, he actually managed to steal away the Krugs on the bottom side from Shun, who also answered top side. So overall, you're just kind of back towards a normal pace. The only thing is Shun having that one camp lead, just that off of the fact that he could, had a bit of a nicer clear. Yep. And also... Um, be able to pick up the, the crook for himself. And, and I want to come back just I'm quickly before I, I apologize to anyone who does actually have breakfast. Um, just a side note that anyone who's a bit more normal than me, uh, props to you. People in our chat are definitely way cooler than me. So you know who you are. You guys know who you are. You know, the cool people know who they are. Um, stay healthy. You know, do do <laughs> have breakfast. breakfast. Eaters, you know. Yeah, breakfast eaters. <laughs> hey, I do toast, but if you do cereal or like a oats or, or something like that, good for you. You know, maybe you go for a walk and exercise. Even better. A lot of Sydney ciders right now. Hotel need breakfast that. is always the best, though. It is. You know, buffet breakfast. You, you get your sausage, yeah. you get your salami, you, you get yeah. all, everything like that. I'm maybe not at a hotel breakfast, but yeah. Anyway, hey, come back just quickly, because people are people are the, the core people will know this. Um, Dagda, what were we talking about? <laughs> what were we actually talking about? <laughs> I don't know. Gank in the bottom line. There's a flay coming through. PZX is joined. A flash away with a dredge line. And Wink starts firing back with a hail of blades. Uh, it was triple longsword versus only one. And V5 wanted to push it a bit further. But now they know PZX is bottom. And that means Shun can have topside scuttle and topside anything in jungle. Again, though, like we're seeing a kind of a slow pace this game, right? Where a lot of back and forth, but no one actually finding that advantage. Um, Shun, though, moving up towards his top side. This is a massive wave, and you have the potential TP from Rookie, although he is very low right now, and Uniboy doesn't have a teleport. Launch against Ward. Good spectral more there from Shun. Uh, puts him down to half HP and gives the Shy a massive push. Dagda, look at the wave. Yeah. I mean, PZX kind of needs to help him out here. They need to get Alias to that He's turret, a level down. Right? There's so much experience being lost. Look at the level 6 to the level 5 of Alias. Maybe he can eke Ooh, it in. Free heal. Realm Warp. Dagda. There's a support coming in as well. That's 4 versus 2 for now. Shun might be caught out. Lucas coming in though. Dredge line. The Shy has need to work. He's hitting onto 3 people. It's a teleport up and Shun will go down for first blood. Traded across. Shockwave flashed away from. From V5. It's more gold over to V5 thanks to First Blood. It's jungle for jungle, but it's Rookie who picks up the kill versus the Deadly Sin. Still a lot of gold on that top side loss for Ali. There's a lot of experience as well. Yep. You can still, see he's still level five compared to all the other solo laners who've hit level six. And uh, a bit unfortunate there for IG where Rookie came up, only had enough mana for that shockwave, so couldn't get much more done, but still, I mean, look at the gold difference between the Shy and Ali. It's 300 gold is up there more, for the Shy, fighting. simply because, yeah, simply because he's been able to zone off Ali's. Plus that, that 15 CS lead shows you all to that story. Rookie coming up as well, picking up a kill. Uh, he didn't lose much because Uniboy had to respond as well. And Lucas and Shun, now the boys are back in town. We we love that Thin Lizzy song. And what I know about it is when they just got back today. Oh, I, don't know what, I don't know what I was saying. I was about to sing this song in, in spoken word. Let me come back to a real point, folks, before I fall <laughs> off a cliff. Lucas roaming up with Shun. This puts more emphasis on the top side, right? They can do it again. They can push Alia's back. And it looks like they are. I mean, Oriana moving up here for Rookie as well. They really want to contest this top side for He's B5. got it. E6. PZX has to respect that. The level disadvantage. Lucas still hasn't been spotted out. And Ali is now all the way back again. Look at what's happening, bot. You're versing a virus that can wave clear. Mid has to be the call. 
And this is so frustrating to play against if you're allies. Like, you know how much you're losing out here. And there's nothing he can do. Completely a level behind. He's just lost three turret plates. And all from IG just pressuring this top side. As he said, Wink, he's perfectly fine. He just farm from afar. He has that uh, arrow. He's going to be all right. And even Lucas here, Whoa. just to try and make sure that there's no funny business that's going to happen. This is what I remember of an IG back long, long ago in... 2018, 2019, right? A lot of emphasis on the top side. Give the shy priority. And priority he has. 30 CS. The denial of Ali is a level down. And a Gwen a that is at gold. 3k. Yeah, a thousand gold, right? Shun can now move that advantage when he has the Rift Herald. And Dragon may be traded, but you can see that Shun is always planning. Uniboy playing towards the bottom side. And Rookie's also going to push out this wave. There's gold to be taken either top or mid. Now, I will also say that because IG are putting so much of that pressure topside, V5 were able to pressure off the turret from Wink and Lucas. So look at the gold and that uh, the experience that Wink has lost. He's sitting about 300 uh, gold behind Kepler at the moment. You can also see same for Shun because Shun has been sitting up kind of escorting the Shy. So it means that you do end up falling behind a little bit elsewhere on the map for IG. So the Shy needs to be the one to actually carry this through. Oh, now, he's on the in. Gwen. Great carry to do it. Dagda, the wave state, not very nice. Needlework's going to slow him down. Ignite there. Flash hasn't been burned. He's waiting for the heartbreaker, but he's still caught out. Shun doesn't need to possess with the Sovereign's domination. He's got the kill. The Shires to assist. And more minions now to be lost. Alias is TP. It will be up in about 10 seconds or so. But another death is just big for IG to gain. I think you just take these clips of Alias and you slap them into a headspace ad because you're going to definitely need some sort of meditation oh, yeah. or something that's going to like de-stress you after this game. Okay. <laughs> yeah, something. Because this is not going to be fun at all for Alias. Like, as I said, like he's sitting at that 46 CS for oh about the last God. three, four minutes. Like it has not changed and he's only getting worse every time Viego comes up here. And he couldn't TP for that last wave because it's still wasn't available. B5 making a play on the bottom side. Instant flash away with Grafton, but Lucas gets the dredge oh. line. He's out. Realm Warp down as well. Uniboy late to the play, but Lucas might just be the target. Slow down, flashing away. Lucas gets Sonic Wave, slows them down, but healed up! Dagda, they don't get anyone. They might get the turret, but they tried so hard for kills. Ali is now, might be in trouble as well. You still have the Rift Herald here for Shun, so Terror will be traded topside, potentially two if this Rift Herald is used, but misplays kind of across the board here from V5. You needed to commit the flash here on Ray Heal on that bottom play to actually get the uh, the lockdown on towards Wink. And then, as you said, Uniboy lets the play, so discoordinated on the bottom side for V5. And IG are answering this topside again. Look how much, again, the Shy is just using yep this to deny the more gold more experience as that wave dies they can take this terror topside whenever they want that's right they don't need the herald and then he can look towards mid if he wants stacked i mean rookie has been playing well on the lane he's always been playing towards that top side and with lucas now roaming around with an elongated bottom lane the world's your oyster here a again we talk about the trading v5 actually getting something but turret's gonna go down the shy picks it up solo and that's the difference Kepler, Rehill, and even Uniboy shared in first turret blood. But the Shy, that leeching leer about to turn into a rift maker very fast. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Shun now move bot side with the Shy and just toss this rift herald he's down. Gonna try this make sure that he's able to get any more plates into him. Oh, let's see. Let's see at the very least, because it's a TP behind. He's not alone. Into Kepler, though, right into the middle of the hallowing mist. Kepler trying to sever him it up, but Nita works so easy. Solar kill on the 80 carry. Rookie comes up for his own. And Invictus Gaming, 4-1 oh. and one, with so many options on the map. And IG just doing a better job of playing around their strength on the map. The Shy is still up on that top side. Ali's had moved down to try and get some experience and some gold back in his pocket. Which means you've got multiple members that can come up and overload that top side of the map nice. for IG. Now, Rift out in the mid lane. It's a rookie. Share it with Rookie. Lucas not going to save for that either. So Uniboy now walking in. A rookie doing a lot of damage. Shockwave <laughs> comes in. I think he wanted to call the bluff. And with two members still there for IG. It looks like he was happy to pull it. Uh, Dagda, uh, did we talk about composition? I remember we, we were talking about... We, we talked about a lot of random things uh, in the <laughs> yeah, early game. We, 
we were talking about the potential for like the early skirmishes from IG. We expected it to be down towards the bottom side and yep. kind of operate in towards uh, dragons and these kind of things, but they've just completely played around the Shy this game. Shy is massive. I mean, who cares about a composition when you have a Gwen that's this yep. large? Like your composition is Gwen. That is all. This is this is the Gwen comp. That is all you need to do right now. Enable Gwen in every facet of these fights and you win for IG. They can even play through side lanes here as well with the Shy even here for the next Dragon too. So you can look for potential dives as looks like V5 going to look for maybe an answer on the top side, knowing that they lose out I mean, plating still up for another 30 seconds. Ignites down, taking up the turret for the time being against the wall. Shun might actually die here. Another turret chopper flashes away. Sovereign Domination there as well, but doesn't want to move near the turret as plating about to expire. But the Shy helps pick up another kill. Uniboy not going to do as fast of work up in this top side. Dagda, that's more gold to the Gwen. And look at the map, right? IG, they understand that, hey, look, the second we're going for these plays, we need to make sure we're not giving the opportunity for V5 to answer. Nobody goes towards that top lane. Rookie reset. And now he's in the mid lane here to help this push rather than dying or being zoned off of that top lane turn. So IG just playing smarter with where they're positioned on the map. And V5 are left just holding crumbles of their turrets. What can you do here? Uniboy brings in the Realm Warp. Sonic Wave not yet to be taken. Uh, Dragon given over to Invictus Gaming here as Mountain Soul Sport. So a lot more field to work around here. If you're the Rise, if you're the Nah, might be beneficial. But IG right now holding a 3k gold lead in game number two. Dagda, I want to point out that we've talked a lot about, you know, the Shy and Shun here. We haven't really lit a candle for Alias in this game because he's been bullied. He's been sent off. He's 70 CS behind. I mean, we did a minute silence for IG. I feel like after this, we might have to do another one for Alias. I feel like it has to be 10 minutes just to try and make oh, up yes. for how far behind he is. Like, he th was three levels down, just dinged nine there. And, <laughs> I mean, a th look, at it's nearly 4,000 gold advantage for the Shy. Yep. Like, he is already working on a second item and you're still trying to complete your first one as Ali is. Like, this is just not fun. And now the problem is you've got a deeping hole for V5 in your side lane. The Shy can dive Ali is at any point in time because of just how large he is, especially because he's got that Nash's Tooth build as well. Yeah, he like, is. Great in these 1v1s. One so, I mean, you need to now commit so many resources to V5 to protect Ali is. And it just means that the rest of IG can do what they want. They can go and look for plays in your topside jungle, look towards the Baron when it spawns. I mean, Rift Child is uh, just picked up there by Shun as well. So oh. you got the potential to go for a tier two off of that push as well. It makes like V5 have got so many problems that they now yep. have to try and put out. How satisfying is it though, watching a rise with a large minion wave? Watching all that yeah. CS follow down. I don't know if you've seen those videos on YouTube where people have gone into a custom game and uh, pulled out like, They've built up minion wave after minion wave, and there's like a thousand minions there. Watching a rise press E and Q is just like... It's like watching someone getting a perfect plane across a nice piece of wood, and you just see that wood shave curl up. You know you know those... those um, I don't know what it's actually called, but they're like good videos of, of people like popping bubble wrap or whatever, or... or Throwing just satis it. Yeah, satisfactory. Yeah, or satisfying, whatever, satisfactory yeah. satisfying videos. That's, that's what it feels like watching... Watching Rise clear a minion wave that's just overgrown. Um, anyway, I thought legal. you were going to go for the Ocho, the the weird sports Reddit. Uh, I don't know if you've been on Twitch. I have not. Yeah. I have not. Oh, talk oh, about well Reddit, are we? Checking it out. Hey, my, yeah, my favorite the Reddit is uh, the OCHO. <laughs> okay, I was going to say favorite Reddit is DIY with the Y question mark. Maybe we're going to ask that of the Shy right now, but he's still alive. The Gwen with Needlework survived for so long. Does so much damage to four people. And now IG just have to clean it up. Heartbreaker following suit. Uniboy comes on in. Ali is against the wall doing his best. But it's a reset. It's Chains of Corruption that misses. And Uniboy almost dying to a possessed Nah. One for one. But Gwen is definitely showing what she's like when she gets items. Yeah, I mean, able to survive for so damn long and that now IG, they still got the push bot, they still have the Rift Herd if they want to take this terror, but looks like they're just going to auto-attack it down instead, should be able to finish this off. You still again can move mid, take that uh, tier 2 here as well. Like, 
IG still coming out on top. But you see here, I mean, everyone from B5 shows up. Everyone. Kepler has to be so careful where he positions because you can just get the shy coming through. Nerdy, honestly, I mean, half a health bar got him one snip. Says a lot about where the shy is at right now. Yeah, it does. I, it, it, like, four health bars, right? The healing as well. Uh, but at the yeah. end of the day, for V5, trading when you're down is still a good thing. But we need to see a lot more than that. It's still a 5k gold disadvantage. And uh, we've still got to deal with the top lane and Nah that's gone to Vine Sundra that will be looking for Sterex Gage, looking for more tankier items so he can survive against the Gwen. Dag, it's almost a flame horizon up there, by the way. Just to let you know that that's almost a flame <laughs> yeah. horizon at 18 minutes in the game. Poor Ali is, and now poor Uni Boy, as he's forced to TP out. out of here. Will manage to get back to the base. But again, nice. like we're just trading size of the map here for IG and V5. IG make a play, but V5 gonna try and go top. Oh, he'll do it. Uh, two he'll v do one it. for the shy. I can see it. Yeah. Well, three v one. It will be four v one if a Felios gets involved. He's just trying to get PZX off of him while they get the turret. So trading size of the map again. Trading still good for the team that's down. As Invictus Gaming are trying to make a play with the Herald mid. No one from V5 are able to get towards the inside track. No, you got three people top, no TPs available. So this could actually be uh, an inhibitor turret going down if IG want to commit. But looks like they're just going to make sure they get the charge and not actually fully Mine. go for it. Rookie wasn't willing to step up as well. On a ward to the side. Uh, the Orianna, who's at 190 CS, matching with the Rise, but has the Ludens in hand is slowly building towards the Seraph's embrace here. Wink doing quite well as well as Lucas gets hooked in, but Reheal definitely won't take that. Lucas instead, nice flash. Kepler saved by the Dark Passage at the end of the day, but Chains of Corruption, if it connected, would have been a dead 80. Carrier should comes in for the flank as well. The Shy pushes in top, and it's just a battle and a war of attrition at this point that IG just will always win. Yeah, the shy just moving over in case any sort of funny business happened here with V5, but still having this side lane push, trying to see if he can get the terror, but V5 spreading out nicely here, making sure that they can keep all angles covered. Shouldn't trying to bait in. The hook comes through. Uniboy with the realm warp behind. It's a ruse. And now Shun caught out. He's a little bit deep here, Dagda, and he's dead. Dead to a rise. Not a good start here as Invictus Gaming want a recovery, but the effort not there. Reheal with a weird death sentence, and... All right, Shun, he dove turrets last game, Dagda. Now he wants to, you know, throw some funny business in there. <laughs> and it's unfortunate because actually, I think IG would have been able to win that if Shun hadn't gone down. You get the massive shockwave from Rookie that half held basically the backline for, well, I say Ali is as a backliner now, essentially with Kepler. Uh, and then you also had um, a lot of damage that could come through from the Shy, but four versus five, they didn't want to try and take that fight. Still get the Dragon though, still like working their way up towards a, a strong point. And it's not like you kind of fall off a cliff here as IG at any point in time either, right? They still have this Gwen who does scale incredibly well and has been accelerated. Orianna going to do great in the late game as well. Honestly, Viego. apart from Kepler, they do scale better in a lot of these situations. Yeah, I mean like Viego as well, when you get resets and fight, when you get the late game and you're, you've got a lot of HP to play with. He could do so much. And, and I love that you brought up Orianna as well, because Rookie's just had a pretty stable game. Zonya's Hourglass has been the second item of choice. And it means he survives. People like Kepler, people like PZX as well. The all-in from Nah, if possible. People can't see it right now, but the Colonel's doing like a, a what's up, bro, kind of thing to us. And I've really... <laughs> so, I don't know what he's doing. What? Okay. All right. Well, I don't know if anyone's seen the, the, the Chinese broadcast. Definitely worth a watch because he's having a great time down there. And I'm so <laughs> sad you can't see that. Oh, man. Dagda, Baron's up. Dragon in four minutes. Talk to me, baby. What do you want to see? Kills. I just want to see Good. IG kind of body V5 at this stage. The 5,000 gold lead. It's been incredibly slow pace and it's... All that gold is situated on the Shy. So they do need the Shy here for these team fights. Um, and it's going to be a case of, like, can they get the vision here for him to join them? Mm, all right. Shun's dead again. Lucas going in. There's a TP as well from the Shy. He's a level 14. Gwen on top of Uniboy. Look at this needlework starting to rise up. Flashes away immediately as V5 still have five members. That's a two-man grabbing him onto Rookie, onto Lucas. Uniboy dealing with a Gwen, though. Snip, snip time as he joins the rest of the family. And V5 now burning down with the HP bar. Great kick, but Wink still not dead. Ali is poked down, and the Shy takes another freebie. V5 back and away, and the gold difference, Dagda, it's still immense. 
if IG didn't have to shy this far ahead, they would be losing these fights. Yep. Like, Wink managed to miss his chains of corruption, flash in Again. place, and then give <laughs> ZX the opportunity for the Dragon's Raid. They should not be as, you know, kind of back and forth and topsy-turvy as these fights should be. IG getting caught in, in a lot of situations and giving a bit of gold over towards uh, V5. Now, a lot of what V5 are waiting are is Kepler to get towards that third item. He's just completed his uh, oh. collector as... Okay, okay. okay. Just Yidi back Boy, it off. Not going to follow through. Again. He likes the baiting realm warps, doesn't he? He doesn't really like to take them seriously. Uh, always always to cheek around IG. Now, we're not going to get to see a replay because I'm sure we'd all revel to enjoy Wink making such a play as he's already missed a lot of Chains of Corruption. Victus Gaming still have that flair, Dagda. Still the same things we know at the moment. This might be a game two where they're winning pretty hard, but I, I'm going to say it. The Shy being consistent shouldn't definitely make me question mark. Yeah, a lot of times uh, Shun just kind of getting caught out here. And the thing is, you don't have the TP now from the Shy. So need to play this a lot safer because you don't want to end up in a four versus five with the majority of your gold elsewhere in the map. Like the four man unit from IG is not that strong apart from Rookie. So so need to be quite safe here. All right. With the Shy pushing in the bottom wave, just note at the moment IG have some of this deeper vision, but V5 are not running it. We're waiting around. And I love that IG aren't even checking Baron Vision. Look at it. It's all watered, IG. Go clear the vision. And then maybe V5 will walk towards the pit going, oh, I wonder if they're doing Baron. Uh, you need to clear vision for that to happen. So it begins. And now finally, it's more of a question mark again. Yeah, and look, at least it's given time for the Shy to shove in this wave. Ali is, has been fully flamed Horizon at this stage. So sad times for him, but... I have to see now as IG start up the Baron, quickly decide against it as Shun takes a lot of damage. And uh, I'm sorry for it, Hysterics, but that's it. That's <laughs> it. IG reset. Try okay. again in 50 seconds. <laughs> yeah, lots, a lot's changed. You know, back in the heyday, I remember first finals was able to cast was IG versus JDG. IG were a team that were bloodthirsty, coming off of winning Worlds, the first time ever for the LPL. And we're like, dude, this team, like, they're so good individually. And sure, there, there's moments where we think that again, but it's it's definitely a far way off since I've seen, oh my god, the Shy on Silas top. The Shy versus the Tai. Um, the Shy versus Ray from EDG back when he was a top lane. We remember C9 Ray. And it, it's a far stretch from the IG that we used to talk about so highly. And, and you know, I love to meme them. Right now, I'm, I, I think I'm the most honest with IG. As V5 are doing Baron. Oh. IG are all bot. Dagda. Dagda. They're Follow nowhere the near. Wait oh a second. They don't actually God. see it No. Okay. Lucas has to come up. Shun's working up, I believe, over the, the scuttle as well. Now they know, but do they have enough time? Everfrost used TP into the middle as the well. It might be a steal. Shun's coming in. He's got it. Oh, no. V5 was so close to pulling IG a little bit later, and they would have done it. But IG cleaned it up and now caught out. Wink hits his first ultimate of the game. And Alias so close to dying himself. Uniboy trying to clean it back. A noble attempt. We give them a nice try, guys. But Shun steals it, and now V5 are really in the pit. Yeah, now the TP in from Rookie to keep the creeps alive. IG look like they're going to barrel through and try and close out this game. Yes, they are, Dagda. In under one hour, this series will find its conclusion. Barroned up IG at the five-man ready. The Shy has himself such a big lead. He'll frontline this as a level 17 Gwen. Alias is level 12. There's a five-level difference, and the Shy knows it. Going golden, dodging away from Alias. Another kill goes over, but he's frontlining. He gets hooked in. I don't think it matters. Don't bring the Gwen near us. Needlework <laughs> for an instant triple. And Invictus Gaming, you know, they needed to win this series, Dagda, and win it. They did. Invictus Gaming pick up the win, confirming Victory 5 will not be hitting playoffs to no one's surprise. And IG looking like at least they got some form back but still a long way from where they once stood. I just don't know why you'd ever try and hook a Gwen near you when she's that far ahead. <laughs> a five level lead and an Invictus Gaming that, that can be proud of that series. You know, a couple of moments there from Shun, a couple of issues that we saw, but at the end of the day, where's that top laner? 
because Dagda, I think he had a stable series. He died. Overall, the Shy died twice in two games. Guys, that's very good. You know, that's very, very good. And if IG can build momentum off of this, who knows? The This guy is the limit. Apparently. Yeah, this is the kind of day where you go buy your lottery ticket because it's not often that we get the shy managing to only die once per game. But look, he did have a pretty good series and um, twice on the Gwen here having these big performances. And it's definitely a pick that suits him, right? It's something that you can play very aggressive on. You got the hollowed mist, a lot of outplay potential, a lot of damage and healing. So something that he can kind of push the limits on. But as IG as a whole, I think we got to see kind of both solo laners looking pretty good. Rookie having a good split, uh, good series as well, picking up the MVP in game number one. The Oriana doing a lot of work in this game as well. I just think that you're kind of still looking at Shun going, hey, there was a lot of times in this game where you, and even a little bit in the last series as well, you're going, you're going a bit too far, not really with the team, getting caught out. And even yeah. Wink as well. I think this was a terrible game from Wink. Yep. Like positioning wise wasn't great the chains of corruption missing consistently it, it was a bit messy from the the ad carry of ig and, and i want to point out that like i was noticing there dagda the team environment is so different again i've watched so many iterations of this roster and I, i'm talking from 2018 onwards right 2017 is when we saw the shy when we saw rookie and we knew rookie was in uh, the lpl for a solid five years at the hang on now it's six years, excuse me. But there's no smiles on the faces of the IG players. There's no, uh, you know, enthusiasm, optimism. Like, even in some of their losses, like, the shy and rookie would always have a smile, always have a grin. I don't know what's, what's happening with the team, but the team environment is not the same. And it's making me question quite a lot. I'm definitely reading into quite a lot, but... The team environment's not bubbly anymore. And I, I truly wonder what's going yeah. on with IG because, again, one of their worst splits, even with a win here, they're now 4-7. and seven. They move up over Rogue Warriors. Let's remind our audience that they need to beat top esports, BLG, WE, Rare Adam, TT. Even though the Shy's MVP here, you still need a lot of games to hit playoffs as IG. Otherwise, first time in seven years, they won't hit him. <laughs> first MVP. Nice. Yes. Well done. Yeah, I mean, it was always going to be the way, right? When you get that many resources dedicated to you, you're going to be the MVP performer. And it was a great job for him in this game, which shouldn't help him out massively. I think, though, I want to go back to your point and just kind of be like, yeah, like, this is V5. This is not like they've just come off beating EDG or one of the top teams. Like, this was kind of an expected gimme. Um, but we're still seeing a lot of the issues that plague IG in this series. So, although you can kind of be like, cool, we don't lose to V5, which is always a good thing for IG. Yeah. I still don't have the biggest of um, confidence in this team right now. And I mean, we kind of highlighted at the start of the day is like, look, this team is barely holding on to their playoff contention. Like yeah. not even sitting in that 10 place spot at the moment. And this needs to be big changes coming through if they hope to make it that far. Yeah, it does. Because now ramping up to top esports, I mean, that's coming up this weekend. I'm glad that they could beat V5 in convincing yeah. fashion, right? We, we could argue the back and forth a little bit, the semantics of, of what we